uh, yeah, we are live, doctor. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another power packed episode of TU's Day Tea Talks. So we are here back with our National Nutrition Week celebrations. I hope all the nutritionists are busy with the Nutrition Week celebrations, actually in Nutrition Month. Okay, and uh, I uh, welcoming you all to this show for today and over to Dr. Janaki. Wow, that's uh, sweet and short. <laughs> My really thank you. Um, so uh, once again, uh, I do welcome all of you. And uh, uh, this is the first uh, week uh, of uh, your National Nutrition Month that we are celebrating. So they say uh, that um, fitness is king and uh, I mean, physical activity is uh, king and nutrition is uh, uh, queen. And if you put them together, you will have a kingdom that is healthy kingdom. So today we have uh, uh, Dr. Anjali Agrawal uh, with us. Uh, all of you know, she's uh, coming here uh, for the third time, if I'm correct. And uh, she will be talking about physical activity as the first step to become healthy. Uh, in the sense, we'll be asking a lot of questions. Uh, there's no PowerPoint presentation. We have to ask a lot of questions, whatever you have. Uh, she doesn't require any introduction as she's already a team member of her T-Talks Tuesday and she is already here for, for you uh, in the past. Uh, but just, uh, just two words. Uh, she's a very great friend of mine and we've been together for quite long on Facebook. <laughs> I don't want to tell about your achievements. I want to tell about her relationship now, <laughs> today. So, but uh, after uh, uh, tea, talk has, uh, tea Talks has started, we became more, uh, more closer. We became more closer to each other. And uh, when my husband was suffering with uh, COVID, she helped me a lot. She's there like a pillar support. <laughs> so, uh, I welcome Dr. Anjali. She is a physiotherapist and uh, she's a consultant physiotherapist and also a lifestyle consultant available online. You can contact her on Facebook. She's there on Facebook with my uh, name, Dr. Anjali Agarwal. You can contact her. So uh, since uh, our uh, topic uh, for uh, National Nutrition Month is converging uh, towards healthy walk through life, so we want to bring different, different aspects of convergence, converging towards a uh, healthy walk-up life. So first step is physical activity. So is here Dr. Anjali. So welcome Dr. Anjali. Thank you, Dr. Janki. Thank you, Mayuri. Thank you, T-Talks. Uh, it's been a pleasure being a part of your uh, uh, talk show every year and every month. Uh, we've been gathering some beautiful moments with all of you. And thank you for inviting me. It's my privilege to be here. Thank you. So first question I will ask, I, I'm prepared uh, with that. I've been thinking, uh, see, uh, of late, uh, we, are, we are seeing a lot of young people dying, not with the COVID, but without COVID, just like that. Just they collapse and they're gone. Or they're gone in the sleep. If you take a yeah. recent example of... Uh, uh, big boss fame, uh, Siddhartha Shukla. So uh, he's so fit, so handsome, uh, very unfair. Uh, of uh, you know, I would say it's very unfair for him to go on now because he has a lot to contribute. His uh, career just began. So it, it is very saddening to see such kind of uh, demise. So what could have gone wrong? Uh, I was uh, going through the literature. I was going through. Uh, I really did a lot of uh, reading after I saw his uh, news. So the, I believe there is a difference between cardiac health and physical fitness. Is this true? Is there a difference between cardiac health and physical fitness? Did you, did you get me? I think we lost you. So uh, uh, I was asking yeah. you. I was asking you, is there a difference between cardiac health and physical fitness? Yes, surely. Like physical fitness goes, leads into you being held towards having a healthy heart. At the same time, uh, what people have talked about or 
what the showbiz industry is making people understand is it's all about the looks or it's all about your muscles or it's all about your outer cosmetic beauty or you know the fitness but what people forget is your internal beauty your internal fitness your internal cardiac health your mental health your emotional health and your physical health is all coming together and then that gives you a cardiac health somebody is uh, trying to build muscles and they've been asked to have a lot of protein shakes right from some supermarket which is not even authenticated by nutritionists and their doctors or even the you know the specialists because it's so harmful for the kidneys to drive away those protein or digest for the human body and then people are taking steroids and steroid shots on their own to build muscles that's right. not the right way to build your physical health because it's very superficial uh, we have to have a long term goal when we want a cardiac health and a long term goal doesn't happen instantly what people want is okay like for i see a lot of my patients they said get me thin in one day you know like get me my neck pain out in one day but what they don't understand is years have gone by in making your spine whatever you are now having it years have gone by what your arteries or your veins have or your body has in forms of cholesterol or any kind of parameters which look after your cardiac health but you cannot reverse it in a day it can be reversed it's not that it can't be reversed it can be but i think a safety way a safe way of physical health equals cardiac health a unsafe way of physical health will cause problem for cardiac health thank you so yeah to yeah. to get that physical body like in you know, a picture perfect body they are uh uh people will work on different parts of the body probably using stations and the weights so uh does it uh, invariably give you cardiac health or uh, we have to separately do some cardio exercises along with this weight lifting and the resistant exercise uh, just let let us know our, about the resistant exercise and weight and the cardio uh, cardio yeah so uh, cardiac exercise is a mind body soul exercise i always say that yeah. so if you're not emotionally feeling nice and strong you can never have a muscle to grow so your muscle or your gut or your brain health everything goes together now if my tummy is not happy if my digestive system is not happy i don't absorb all the nutrition the gut my protein assimilation is not right when when is that happening when i'm emotionally not happy emotionally not uh and having an emotional well being now when these two things are not working any kind of food i add in or, or any kind of workouts i add in that will not lead into a muscle piling up and your cardiac health will definitely suffer so we have to have a plethora of things on our plate we have to work on the emotional health of our person uh physical well being and psychological well being and also physical well being so it respects to weight adding weights so uh, person has to do a step by step process so as per your heart rate as per your muscle weight as per your height and your ideal uh, respiratory rate we have to target your muscle activity or muscle to form so in that format i think you can add in weights but cardio can be end of swimming cycling jogging yoga meditation is another good form to help you you know assimilate that protein and digest the protein and then use up to build up the muscle the good amount of muscle mass if you have that's a good cardiac health but if you have if you think you'll bulk up your muscles that really doesn't really work towards the cardiac health okay yeah. bulking the Thank muscle you. may not uh, uh... work up to the cardiac health now when we lift the weight uh, uh, there will be really. uh, increase in heart rate uh, or the, is, is there any yeah. difference so, uh, because uh, exercise when you do uh, challenging we, exercise yeah exercise it is believe yeah. we have to increase our heart rate so when we are lifting yeah uh, we have to increase our heart rate, rate yeah when we are lifting certain amount of weight it uh, definitely increases our heart it pumps more blood for the work but uh, 
uh, does it really help yeah. in uh, uh, giving us cardio or is it just for the sake of pumping the blood to the muscle uh it is a good, good exercise because you build up muscle uh, mass by lifting mm -hmm. weights and the blood circulation to the muscle improves and thereby you are multiplying the muscle fibrils to grow in a muscle by lifting the weight at the same time you are causing your heart to work really hard to do an effort to an effort so when you do an effort your heart has to pump more blood at the same time your muscle bulks up they all use up the more muscle more oxygen in, is being used by the heart more blood going to the muscle and thereby overall cardiac health improves thereby but you know like for diabetes for control of blood pressure we always say lift weights or for pcos also which are all cumulated cardiac health every pcos mom has to look after her uh, cardiac health because that's what it leads into so if they are adding more weights they are adding more muscle more muscle means the oxygenation process for your body also improves and thereby your cardiac health is also improved yeah okay any questions you have uh... Uh, yes, yes, doctor. So, uh, actually, generally, what it is, you know, uh, the saying, you know, uh, seventy percent is diet and thirty percent is physical activity, right? So, what happens uh, most of the time? Uh, people would be following the diet, okay, and people also mm -hmm. follows uh, physical activity, and of course, emotional part uh, we will deal with that, but. Uh, even then after doing you know certain people won't see the results or how do you justify yeah. this statement or you know is it uh, even you know one, there was one case with me one of my client he was following their diet very well and physical activity he was going to the physical activity also but i felt the physical activity was slightly less but when i said to in increase your you know the energy i mean the physical activity thing and all uh, he used to go to a gym the gym trainer said it seems uh, that uh, you know you need to follow only diet 70% is diet that that's how you lose it's not physical activity i mean physical activity is only just 30% so what happens you know uh, what i feel is every both they should go hand in hand but uh, only uh, you know True. giving it to only to just to the diet how far it is you know how can we justify this statement i <laughs> yeah so i think momentum is good right your food is in the gut and for your food to assimilate and move through the intestine you need to have peristalsis and your peristaltic movement will only work if you are working out right. if you all seated out and you are having a most well, well well to do diet with you but there's no movement but the food absorption is decreased the nutrient absorption is decreased and thereby cardiac health is suffering and overall health the bone health people complaining of fibromyalgia all over body pain this is all a result of they just believe that okay i'll eat i'll not do any physical movement now when you do physical movement it's also adding in your positive endorphins your positive hormones right and when your positive hormones are flowing you start to feel happy and then your gut starts to digest food in a much better way your peristaltic movement is good your bowel movement is very good and for women it's very important that they move otherwise there is a total stagnation of energy around the gut and if that is the way then they cannot lose fat they cannot burn calories and they can never be happy and if your happy mind is not there you can always have cortisol uh, stress response which will cause more weight to put on many women will say okay i'm putting on weight on my tummy but they forget that they are so stressed out so emotionally drained out and they don't walk they don't want to move and then they say okay i've got a good diet plan but it is a friend of each other your emotional health your food and your physical activity they all work in conjunction it's never like one thing separated it's like heart brain mind body all working together right right yeah and and uh, ha, ha, what kind you know how do we uh, go in these cases like you know especially women who suffer with osteoarthritis or you know where they cannot move much and you know diet is definitely will be taking care of it diet and all but when it comes to the physical activity part what what are your recommendations uh, you know for the women or men whoever it is and uh, what do you recommend especially in osteoarthritis cases 
the knee pains yeah. and so all osteo, yeah so in osteoarthritis you see the clinical uh, research papers which have come from the australian journals they say that even if you have osteoarthritis you should try to embark on at least 30 to 40 minutes of physical exercise it could be doing a normal morning walk in the sunlight or can be doing a stash, stationary cycle you know bike in the gym or you can go for swimming now swimming is a very good sport with people for osteoarthritis it's a non weight bearing sport you don't put pressure on the joint and you're having an overall workout for your heart and for the body so you build up muscles and you can you know work on your lung efficiency which improves your cardiac efficiency so overall swimming or hydrotherapy is a very good exercise protocol for people with osteoarthritis but at the same time if you're not walking people are very scared people have been told you know the doctors will tell okay you have osteoarthritis don't put weight on the joint yes. don't put weight you lie down and do all your exercises yes but your joint will deteriorate your cartilage or your joint needs to be you know having weighted so they have to do weight bearing exercise which is walking slow jog slow running so people who do the slow jog and walking have a much better knee health than people who are sedentary and don't do anything because your lubrication of the joint will happen only when you do movement right. so it's almost same like now during the rainy season all our doors are got jammed up right we can't open it so the same thing happens when our lubrication in the joint is not there we are not weight bearing the muscle will not get strong your bones will not get calcium will not absorb the calcium and the overall joint health will decrease and will deteriorate so my advice to all the people is do exercise which could be simple walk 30 minutes can do stationary bike ride and also if you have a facility to swim do swimming swimming is the best exercise if you do all painful joints swimming is best for non painful joints you can go for a walk and uh, use a cycle to cycle yeah thank you thank you okay yeah and uh, as you said you know uh, pcos also you know where pcos mothers has to be very uh, precautionary uh, steps for the uh, cardiac health and all so can you please explain the you know the exercise regime that kind of regime they need to follow you know like initially cardio and then weights or weights and then cardio what what you know what is the uh, uh, mix and match that they have to adopt kind of thing few tips on that so pcos yeah pcos we know that there's a lot of link with insulin right my you really know that yes yes so everything is about insulin insulin nowadays so if your insulin resistance you definitely are having pcos yes. now for insulin resistant the best recommended protocol which we give is light weight resistant exercises or weight weight lifting basically but at the time what women are doing it they're overdoing weight lifting Okay. okay so they'll do it to an extent where they reach a cortisol uh, response and your body just shuts off cutting fat and builds up more stress response and the insulin just spikes up again so oh. they have to do a moderate exercise of 25 to 30 minutes and make sure that the weights are not going too high okay. at the same time they're not running and jogging for more than 15 20 minutes oh. so that's a balance they have to have they have to have 15 20 minutes of like weight lifting not too much weight lifting moderate and a 15 minutes of a jog and a run but what they should add in is every 15 20 minutes you add in some form of movement in the house right you know it should be a little bit of a squat it could be mopping the floor it could be going and doing gardening or it could be just go down and fetch your vegetable cart like whatever what is happening with pcos people think okay one hour i go to the gym i'll mm. burn out my calories i am fine now my insulin is fine but they will not move in the house so that doesn't work right, right. so your body hormones are working 24 by 7 and you got to move your body 24 by not 24 by 7 at least 12 hours in the day at least right and it has to get adequate sleep and adequate rest right so that's the balance we say 15 15 30 minutes a very moderate exercise not too much load on the uh you know the hormones which can spike your stress response okay that is a key thing i think many women do beautiful with that response right right okay yeah 
Doctor, unmute yourself. Doctor Janki. Unmute. Uh, lot of lot of uh, noise is there from our side. Some work is going on, so that's why I kept it on mute. So that's a, that explains why some people do not uh, lose weight. So uh, yeah. you clearly explained that. And you are mentioning about the cortisol response. So at the what level that cortisol response starts? For example, say um, 10 minutes into uh, treadmill or, or, or how much? How much time uh, does it take for cortisol to uh, start uh, setting in? Yeah. So what I always tell every woman is when you're starting the exercise, don't think it like a task. If you think it like a goal and a task, you will say, oh my God, I got to finish it. So you have a target in mind. And the moment you see there's a goal and a target, your mind starts to overthink. That itself will cause your stress response to go up. So I always say that you got to enjoy whatever you are doing. Whatever you're doing, enjoy it. I want to eat my food, I got to enjoy. I want to work out, I want to enjoy. So if that element of fun and enjoyment is added, women will do good without the stress response. But if okay. I say a lot of women, they think uh, they go to the trainers, right? They've been made to work two hours, hmm. you know, like two hours, one hour, they're like and too, hard off. Too. too hard a thing. Now, <laughs> women versus men, I'm not differentiating between the men and the women, but I'm talking about the hormones, the women works and the men work, right? right? A man can do one hour of solid workout in the gym with weights and all. For a woman, her cortisol, her estrogen, her progesterone, her insulin are the driving forces. Now, if you make a woman do too much of weightlifting, her estrogen will spike up immediately. Now, we don't see any women in this planet in an, on this planet now with an who is not having a high estrogen response. Everybody stressed out with all the non pollution all around. We have estrogen as as a bad enemy in our body every time. And now, when you do a work more than 35 minutes, you've gone beyond 35, your estrogen will spike up, that'll cause your insulin response to really cling on and that cortisol will really, you know, skyrocket over the roof. So this lady over the gym was given 80 kilos to live for <gasps> nearly 40 minutes. Can you believe it? <gasps> okay, so when she came to me, she's thin from the upper door, you know, the dorsal is very thin, okay. but her lower hips are bloated up like it's gone beyond a certain normal level. So it's go about, uh, not from 42 inch, it's almost gone to like 63 inch. Can you believe it? Oh. So she having a small torso and a big hip. Why is this happening for her? She's lifted a weight, which is not ideal for her bodily hormones. So a lot of time women understand that workout is designed for a particular body. Okay, or physical activity is designed for Mayuri, is designed for Dr. Janaki, or it's designed for Kalpana and Pranita, right? It can never be, okay, my doctor said do 40 minutes of workout or do one hour of running. Everybody is different. Everybody's hormones are different. Everybody's way of using of the hormones is different. So make a schedule of everybody as per the person is presenting as. Right. Yeah, Mayuri. <sighs> Just like diet, uh, uh, yes. diet has to be planned according to the individual. Indeed. And uh, the most important key is one has to enjoy that, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Definitely, it's boring to work with the missions. It's always <laughs> good to dance. <laughs> very, <laughs> dance, very true. Run, jog along with people. That, right. uh, that will uh, give more uh, uh, pheromones release. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kush Bihari sir is asking on Facebook, BMI, we talk in body mass index in allopathic medicine and we assess obesity. Now BMI said to be in Sanatana Dharma, body, mind and intellect. Your mm. health is not based on physical structure and, need, and needs the diet prescription is based on your sound mind rather than the cosmetic approach. It's a advice from sir. Suggestion. Suggestion. Yeah. Yes. True, Great. true. Very true. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what are the cardiac other than cycling and uh, uh, treadmill walking and jogging? Any other cardiac exercise that 
that we can uh, do uh, especially for people who are mid, like you know middle age like starting from 40 years uh, because that seems to be even um, many studies are showing that uh, uh, middle age cardiac arrest has become very common especially in the younger group so can we uh, can we develop uh, some sort of even when they are working like you no know, because they are working the other way around the clock other way around like uh, working in the night and sleeping during the day that itself is changing and uh, a lot of stress so is there anything like just like sitting here can uh, they improve their cardiac uh, health, health. always sure. something simple and they should do <laughs> <laughs> so i always say is uh, basically you can do a sitting surya namaskar right and if you look at all the yogic form of asanas are with breathing and breathing out and it's a lot, lot of mind body soul connection when you do yogic pranayamas or yogic asanas and all and when you, you can do a sitting surya namaskar we, we give it to a lot of people who are working in the it to do a sitting surya namaskar and you can touch your heart and you can feel the heart is pumping even with mm. five sitting surya namaskar your heart starts to pump real fast so mm. you already give a boost to your metabolism by sitting and doing it you can have some dumbbells not even dumbbells you just bring a rice bag you know 5 kg rice bag hold it in your hand and just pick and use and pick and use your hands so you moment your hand goes up and you have a weight in your hand you will start increasing flow of blood to your heart okay and major important thing is to try to imagine to breathe through your nose people have stopped to use their nose you know they don't do nasal breathing and mm. when you don't do nasal breathing your heart is affected that is what i keep telling people is uh, they will have show like you know they'll get panicked and they'll be working deadlines they are meeting and they'll be like opening their mouth and they'll be typing multiple emails at one go and they forget to close their mouth they forget to take a breath in through the nose now if you lose weight by doing nothing just start to breathe well start to use your nose and breathe through your nose lock your mouth for 2 seconds i always talk about silence a lot of women i see like a lot of my women patients <laughs> while doing our workouts will be talking a lot right <laughs> they'll be talking i will only tell them one thing switch your mouth yes. off for one moment switch your mouth off because the amount of oxygen which needs to go through your nose should go through your nose only mm. and otherwise you are taking shout words of air from your mouth which will cause a carbon dioxide oxygen imbalance in the body and that again causes oxidative stress and your heart rate goes up so mm. many of these workout people who go to the gym they'll be on the phone jogging on the treadmill talking to somebody on the phone that is not what workout means workout has to be done only in a very mindful way and as dr uh, bihari has told already right we have to have a mind body connection so uh, that's that say it should be like just sitting hold dumbbells in your hands tap your feet on the ground sit to stand just sit to stand about 100 counts on your chair you can work out and do it every one hour you know like there's no uh, theorem around it how many times you can do people are saying okay do 10000 steps in a day i don't believe it i don't usually tell people to have a gadget in your hand and Thank you. do 10000 steps in a day <laughs> <laughs> ma'am i've done 10000 steps in Just, a day i'm done today <laughs> i'm done so for the day been, yeah i've done 10000 steps in a day you know like enough it's not the way out right it is like Uh, i'm not moving my body but i've done 10000 steps in a day that's not <laughs> you know everything cannot be measured in a app basically i said go little app free and up, up, apne bare mein batao <laughs> yes a body is is the biggest uh, instrument that tells us what we exactly are doing so uh, people who are here can uh, ask a questions yeah, if you want you can show us your beautiful face and then ask Any questions Anj- when uh, Dr. Anjali is here? And Facebook participants also, you can just post your questions. We are here to address. Okay. And Anjali Agarwal is here. Any kind of uh, uh, doubts with regards to the physical activity that you are having, uh, you can just post it. Anjali, uh, Dr. Anjali will be uh, will be answering your questions. 
so regarding uh, uh, the most common for women especially knee pain and uh, this knee pain is also starting very early uh, as early as 35 years so uh, i think we lost uh, An dr anjali no no she is there doctor okay she is mm. there okay so yeah, yeah. Uh, and sometimes sometimes it is on one side sometimes it is bilateral and then uh, along with that are the mm. uh, like you know basic common ones are like you know back pain uh, you know these two especially with women even men also do have uh, knee pain may not be that common at uh, age of 35 but uh, definitely at later uh, stage they will get in a, they too will get knee pain but uh, uh back pain is common in men also what can we do yeah. for this what what are the causes and what can we do physically to relieve get relieved from this pain see the mean the younger uh, you know the modern we are becoming the younger our uh, bones are the older our bones are becoming So yes. I think the modern lifestyle is the biggest culprit behind all our aged bones and painful bones. I would say, and uh, I think the biggest reason for uh, our sedentary lifestyle is the kind of life uh, we demand with everything being online, everything so easily available by just staying at home. Right from the time one year has gone by, everybody is knowing that we can still be at home and. still be productive right from our computers yes. so yes. Yes. Uh, basically we were uh, our ancestors were the hunters right our ancestors were somebody who would farm or do farming and grow crops and would uh, go up on the mountain and pluck the trees and bring it we were a very uh, active person as ancestors in those times but now we hardly use our joints for anything and if you ask me there's a button which now the robocop has come which will mop the floor and there's a everything is so modernized that we need a body to move and the basic reason when your body getting back pain or joint pains are lack of movement lack of mobility and when you don't stand and don't let your gravity do the job for your muscles and your bone your bone deposition of the calcium in the bone decreases so if you're not weight bearing if you're not standing in a day in the whole span of 12 hours your calcium the phosphorus any kind of thing minerals which should deposit in your bone doesn't happen and now when that doesn't happen your body is very soft and gooey so the bones can change their shape they can deteriorate they can go into uh, total uh, arthritic changes with osteophytes forming and then they have a scoliosis the spine is all deviated and crooked all this is because people have stopped walking people have stopped getting up as often as possible people have stopped doing work on their own so my message should be uh, to everyone as be independent be more mobile and be active throughout the day it's not about active just going to the gym and you are active for one hour oh, i've done my workout you got to be active throughout the day and do things in the house on your own you can't be dependent on you know help house and all the time so we are more mobile now <laughs> more mobile <laughs> that's very nice dr jati <laughs> so just uh, i was just wondering now uh, we're, we're being more mobile <laughs> physically more <laughs> having mobile in hand Uh, I, so, I really admire your you know your small sir. jokes which comes up your witty jokes all the time it comes up a great actually, sense of humor actually that yeah. that actually makes the session uh, not very uh, very scientific <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> so uh, coming to the same thing because we are more mobile now what kind of uh, problems can we expect Or like you know, all the time the mobile is in our hands, and or the tab is on hands, or we are just looking at uh, in the, on the screen and typing all the time. So, uh, what can we expect? Like you know, uh, what kind of pains or, or what kind of uh, disabilities that we can expect with this kind of uh, yeah. lifestyle? The so biggest reason people get carpal tunnel, you know, they have pain in the wrist, then they yeah. have tennis elbow pain, shoulder pain, neck. pain lower back pain tailbone pain lot of women nowadays because of prolonged sitting are getting tailbone pain and right. now they're getting pain in the 
one side of the butt, which is like a sciatica pain, you know, pain is okay. going from the butt down to the lower part of the leg. So mm. all these are because you don't open up your body. Basically, your body is constantly folded. You need to straighten out the body so that all the nerves, all the bones or the blood flow starts to happen. And if I don't do anything, if I only give one advice is to start walk. Just walk in the house for 30, 20 minutes, every two hours, every three hours. I think half the problem is solved. If you are sitting all the round. Another problem, which is now I'm seeing in small kids is their attention span has decreased quite a bit. Mm. So if I'm sitting in front of the computer, my eye level will only go to a certain range. It's called very low sighted. But the far sightedness probably is going down for most of the children who are working only, who are studying mm. online. And then I, my proprioception, what is proprioception and what is balance and what is coordination? I will know that somebody's coming from behind, right? Right. Like if I'm in a, if I'm driving a car, when I drive a car, my eyes are on the front or on the back, on the sides too. So my is working in 360 degree angle. But at home, when I'm in front of the PC, my work is only one directional, which is anterior. Mm -hmm. So hmm. everything around side to side lateral and behind me is not working for me. So my proprioception comes down, my balance has come down. So right now I've seen people have been, you know, like just walking and falling down recently. So hmm. they stepped out of the house and they're going to the garden and they're falling down. It is hmm. all happening because one year of total segregated, uh, limited space movement. And it's called Correct. spatial arrangement of your eye and your ear. Everything works uh, in conjunction. Right. So when you do dancing, right? When you do dance, you look around, like right? you look around with your eyes all around. So it's a movement for the eye, which is important. But if you're all stuck to the computer, then your, you know, the frame of uh, spatial arrangement decreases. So my advice is try to move around your neck, all around the room. Look at everything around the room. Don't just look at the PC. Yes. At least come out and come out in yeah. the balcony and watch watch traffic or birds or girls or boys, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, and do something different. I mean, the, look at the plants at times, look at the greenery yeah. around, look at the birds, something different. Yeah. And also uh, by practicing just... looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, the far farthest object yes. possible. Yeah, yes. So... You have the laptop, look at the curtain far away and then look mm. at your laptop. This should be the habit. Otherwise, uh, you know, like you will get a very low sighted view. And when you start to drive the car, like long distance, you have issues with headaches and all. Correct. And also visibility is very important while driving. Very important, yeah. Yeah. True. Any questions? <laughs> Mm, not questions, but uh, Bihari sir is saying, good Dr. Anjali again, integrated physiotherapy, no, sorry, physiotherapy has come into existence now. Lot of yoga practices ha are being authenticated with lot of improvement in the physical body and metabolism and emotional body too. Right. Yeah, true, true, very true. So now when it comes to yoga and yoga poses, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, any kind of uh, body pains or, you know, let's take an example of osteoarthritis or back pain, certain kinds of movements are restricted and certain kinds of movements are to be done. No, what, uh, can you please explain us what kind of, uh, you know, it is good to avoid these kind of movements when you have osteo osteoarthritis or a back pain or kind, uh, any kind of joint pains. Yeah certain restricted yeah. movements so we have right we, yeah so people do vajrasan right they sit on folded knees so people right. with osteoarthritis or knee pain should totally avoid it because you're sitting and you're loading the joint and pulling all the ligaments in the cartilage and your cartilage is already worn out so people should avoid vajrasan if they have osteoarthritis of the knee joint and if they have to do it, there is a modified way of doing it, like putting a cushion in between the butt and the heels and trying to put uh, your knees on the pillow and try to reduce the amount of stretch. That's very important. Now, as uh, for very uh, older women who are like aging about 55, nearing menopause, 
uh, they usually lose a lot of collagen in the body basically yes. so we usually give this glucosamine close the collagen peptides right all of them will have a standard prescription take glucosamine chondroitine hyaluronic acid and uh, you know like all that so what they have to understand is don't over stretch yogic asana because you are lacking the flexibility from the collagen and when that collagen is not there you don't have strength in your ligament and at that time many women when they do bhujang asanas they tend to get into a problem called spondylolisthesis many women post 55 okay. post menopause because your bone cannot absorb good calcium and when you do extreme good bend you cause one of the vertebrae to move forward listesis now you can understand we talk about disc and all the disc is something which you don't worry about but when your vertebrae have moved front so it's grade one if you don't listen to us and keep doing the bhujang asanas and everything grade two and then finally after grade two it's our role decreases and then you have to go for surgery because you have to pull the vertebrae put the wire in and then you know make that whole vertebral column strong so women should be very careful of not doing extreme backward bends mm. so i see a lot of yoga asanas women people are teaching is okay let's do a full backward mm. bend let touch our hand at the back let our tummy pop out on the you know on the top yes. it's it's something to modernize something very good but it's quite unhealthy for everyone to do it you know like certain body as you said certain foods are good for certain people Right. that way certain exercises can be done by certain people certain exercises are taboo for some people so they should take a serious consideration of a physio assessment and then devise the exercises and uh, post uh, 40 and 50 most of the women also have something called as uterine prolapse or rectal prolapse many of them and they start they starting to run marathons or they've been running, trying to you know do all kind of high intensity workout so just before our session i was seeing a young lady here around 35 she has had a meniscectomy which is the meniscus injury in the knee and she's had an yeah. operation also for that okay now the reason being about what was the reason behind it was that she was doing high intensity workouts now when you're doing high intensity workout what posture you have to do what is the rhythm of movement what is the level of activity what is the body alignment nobody looks at that they only look at okay my trainer told me to do this 20 jumps and uh, you know like 20 squats let me jump and do a plank and then do a sit up i'm running marathon and all of that takes a toll on a women's health which is the rectal prolapse the uterine prolapse knee meniscal tears acl tears everything is because your body is lacking a bit of collagen in the body at as you age 32 33 34 so make sure that you know what is your nutrient nutrition profile before embarking on exercise profile and be with your physio to understand what your body is and what kind of exercise should be done so as as the women age they should seek advice and then only do any kind of exercises random we don't pick up uh, or weight loss journey as the only journey to be followed and that uh, health is the goal has to be goal health is yes. the goal yes yes so uh, mayuri and other uh, uh, dr lata sashi is here hi lata uh, vani is here hi vani uh, and pranita sarita sri and venkata narayana uh, i don't know whether uh, i'm i really don't know how we are practicing what you are practicing uh, sarita sri sarita sri pranita uh, and venkata narayana Uh, so maybe uh, you guys can give a, a, a small tip on strengthening the muscle uh, with the nutrition anyone from the audience are you guys suggesting collagen or protein yes. whey protein or casein protein whatever vani ma'am can help us Hi, yeah. Hi, Janki Garu. Hi. Mayuri Garu, hello, hello. Garu. Good, yeah, good, ma'am. How are you? Fine. I'm good. I'm good. So it was uh, the session was quite interesting, and uh, I really like it. Was a great session. 
uh just now uh, i have attended a webinar on sports nutrition basically so immediately this fitness like it's like a link in between okay. these two webinars okay. uh so always i had a question in my mind uh, that like uh, exercise like to what extent how much time and what are the supplements we really need to take uh so and we with the recent uh, sudden demise of uh, mr shukla uh, siddharth shukla and all so while doing gymming or with extreme strenuous exercises and all that are happening these days with a, uh, and it is happening with very young uh, people yes. that too so fitness to what extent is a big question mark and nowadays our uh, all our nutrition pack, uh, fraternity are uh, facing uh, uh, a big uh, question mark so uh, as per my opinion uh, how much protein uh, like you basically as uh, there are standards like 1 gram per kg body weight and for athletes or uh, uh, for bodybuilding oh. it, it can be exceeded up to 1.2 gram per kg body weight and the supplements with regard to supplements like uh, uh, especially for the people who are uh, uh, for muscle strengthening and all uh, definitely they can go with the supplements like whey protein concentrate that to one to two scoops in a day before or after uh, workouts so this is what usually i suggest uh, to my clients uh but uh, uh, specialist has to say uh, that exactly uh, for how like as per the bo- kg kg body weight like how much of uh, protein uh, quality protein is required and how much of uh, uh, time a uh, a person should do the exercise that should that has to come from a researcher uh who are like doing on uh, sports nutrition or uh, uh, especially doing uh, uh, um, uh, research on special uh, on this uh, specific topic i believe so for only weight loss i can say definitely i'll recommend supplements that to natural uh, quality protein uh, with all the uh, natural sub- supplements along with whey protein concentrate casein casein also can be recommended uh, for the people who are not uh, allergic to uh, i mean lactose so that that can also be suggested uh, this is what is my uh, 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 perception regarding uh, this protein supplement janki gar nice so so m- m- most of the dietitians of course all of us uh, do uh, the similar fashion and it changes with the client and the requirement of course and the age and the, and uh, if they are into training or something then uh, it changes all together so uh, so coming to dr anjali so uh, we we uh, we do give uh, proteins uh, uh, in the form of supplement or uh, through diet uh, both high biological with a high biological value and even plant protein so uh, to strengthen the small even it is small muscle also i think even small muscles also become very weak so simple ruptures keep happening which we really don't know or by next day it will get heal and you know even the skin ruptures and all as people age so is there any kind of uh, exercise uh, to Uh, keep that strength uh, of course we cannot stop aging but uh, can we keep that strength to some extent the elasticity goes the strength goes so can we do something about it yeah so it's more about having a lot of blood circulation going to the muscle increasing your breathing which is also the nasal breathing which i talked about a lot of nitric oxide is being you know like is harnessed to have a lot of non oxidative stress in your body is in your eyes and when your blood flow to your muscle or your joint or your organ is improved your elasticity is definitely going to get better now so we talk about elasticity also coming from your gut so basically where is your collagen getting assimilated it is in the gut right so if you want elasticity to improve suppose we are doing uh, diacetyl recti uh therapy we talk a lot on elasticity we talk a lot on uh collagen we talk a lot on gut and mind and breathing so 
basically what it is is why only few women get it few women don't get it yeah there's a lot to do with your mind there's a lot to do with your mind not letting the collagen in your gut form and thereby your collagen which is helping your tummy muscles to come together it doesn't happen for you so the breathing is very important the breath is to be through the nose less of breath from the mouth so less of talking more of breathing through the nose that's one second thing is move as often as possible so the moment you have a lot of movement the lymphatic flow to your organs improves and when you get up first thing in the morning definitely try and do a cold shower a cold shower a cold bath why okay. we talk about cold showers and cold bath it has a very natural beautiful effect on our mental status the cold shower cold shower helps on the vagus nerve and vagus nerve is something which helps to keep us calm and keep us gut also very calm now when your gut is calm your vagus nerve is nice and doing fine your absorption and assimilation of your proteins is good and your collagen gets randomized towards the muscles okay. now for your muscles to take up the collagen you need to add in blood circulation so many bouts of exercises every one hour like i always say do a snack of exercise you snack on exercise don't do a you know big plate of exercise do a snack of exercise so throughout the day add in 10 to 15 minutes of movement it could be little simple jog then do a little mop a simple jog simple squat and then go and do kitchen gardening you know you sit on the ground and you do the garden you kind of dig the plant and so on so when you connect with nature when you are doing something where movement is there your energy around the lymphatic flow is fabulous and that will cause your elasticity to do wonder and good amount of sleep you got to crash to your bed by 11:30 or 11 at the most what i talk about the gh hormone the growth hormone right the growth hormone goes a long way to have your collagen to be synthesized and many of the young people are aging and they have to go for all kind of skin replace skin therapy skin pigmentation therapy all because they don't sleep before 12 in the night now between 12 and 2 is your growth hormone which is secreted now if you don't sleep between 12 and 2 am how will your growth hormone do the replenishing and form collagen or let your elasticity of the skin improve that is why people are going to all kinds of you know treatments and all but not understanding the basic you know the you have the basic pill for a beautiful non aging skin or non aging muscle at home is sleep sleep between 12 and 2 must it's a must and add movement more movement you can see the skin change in a day right right that's a really yeah. great tip <laughs> actually uh, the Anti-aging. saying Uh, no doctor uh, the other one also just like small frequent meals uh, small frequent uh, activities and physical activity yes. you know is also needed snack exercises snack yeah. exercises yeah snack exercises <laughs> nicely said Anshu. that's a, that's a new word you coined it today yeah so we are going to use it uh, the left <laughs> right center <laughs> <laughs> true Uh, very nice tips uh, anti aging uh, tips especially the cold shower bath and vagus nerve uh, stimulation and uh, uh, does it work with the uh, massages also massages yeah so you can go for a massage like once in a year or you can do it yourself too hmm. and basically what is it it's draining your lymph flow basically improving the lymph flow improving your blood flow and it's also therapeutic it helps to calm you down it's work on your parasympathetic mm. system and the more relaxed you are the more peace in peace you are actually letting your healing process to happen yes. so that's very important to keep your mind in peace and your gut healthy okay great so that that uh, uh, puts us to call a, a person to speak on gut health <laughs> next week <laughs> yes yes <laughs> okay so some people when uh, they are working working in the sense not the exercise in in general when they work uh, they they like you know do puffing like you know they puff the air out from their mouth instead of normal yeah, like breathing you know 
yeah yeah uh, so or when when they pick up things or when go up the stairs and come then they start uh, puffing out the air from their mouth so what happens to gas mm. escape is is it okay is it good or uh, how they have to because they, they have to hold the you know hold yeah. that breath and all that so they start puffing puffing out yeah yeah so uh, we say this puffing is very common in patients like copd people who have chronic obstructive lung disorders mm. and we usually teach these kind of breathing to them because okay basically the oxygen sacs are never good like they keep falling for people with chronic obstructive lung disease okay so when they climb up a step or whenever they do a task which is of effort we try to ask them to breathe in and slowly puff out mm. kind of like blowing uh, air out so by doing this they are letting a good amount of oxygen still stay in their lung and they don't feel uh, suffocated they don't feel that they are going uh, you know hypoxic okay and by doing it they and a slow release of breath gets the carbon dioxide to slowly come out of your body basically the problem with chronic obstructive diseases they cannot breathe in well and when they there's already lungs are already hugely puffed up and they are already having a in, in, inhalation cycle more the expiratory cycle has to improve for them so mm-hmm. we improve the expiratory cycle by teaching them the puffing breath and it's a way to get them a very good active lifestyle otherwise people with copd will always be feeling short of breath and they cannot walk from even from one room to another room if this kind of breathing capacity is not Okay. So it's a very good and efficient way to teach them different protocol of breathing, actually. So the body does automatically when the lung is not a hundred percent functional. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So it can develop at any age, right, Anjali? COPD can develop at any age. Yeah. So uh, COPD. Yeah. 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 So uh, COPD and all is mostly happening when you are around a polluted environment. or you are around a smoking environment people who have been uh, you know like having a lot of uh, inhalation from inhalation smoke around their factory site or environmental site so many people have undiagnosed copd too okay. so i think it all starts from not knowing at all that they had copd and then this right. got to a worse status so that's when they start to pant for breath right 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 uh, especially in few cases of post covid uh, uh, symptoms also they are developing like heavy uh, lung issues uh, like breathing issues and all so i uh, or are those exercises or post covid physiotherapy um, uh, is it different for different age groups or those uh, uh, lung physiotherapy and all are same for all the age groups uh, dr anjali i just wanted yeah. to know regarding this yeah. could you please so help dr. me out? Vani, yeah yeah so dr vani uh, there has been uh, like since the time covid came everybody started to teach lung exercise to every covid patient true but let me just give a disclaimer here uh the covid breathing exercise and pulmonary rehab and covid rehab is very different from any other rehab uh, for the lung so like for people with asthma and copd there's a different breathing cycle which has to be taught people with covid has to have a different cycle of breath because they have pulmonary fibrosis so their lung tissue is not mobile it's fibroid it's like adhered and scarred with people with copd and asthma and pranayama breathing that is a different breath and people with covid they need a different breathing capacity so since i also train in cardiopulmonary care and i do pulmonary rehab and i also am part of the long covid rehab nowadays so long covid is something where your lung and your heart and your blood vessel they all are getting affected as a result of covid so we have to be very mindful to keep your heart rate in check and then give you breathing exercise which is not forceful breath because if you do a forceful breath in a pulmonary fibrous lung you will rupture out the alveoli you will you will burst okay. out the alveoli now people have been giving a lot of this inspiratory spirometer like okay do the ball exercise it has to be done but very gentle and slow not forceful breath again you will rupture out the alveoli and we have to focus more on inspiration rather than expiration 
in case of covid breathing and in case of uh, asthmatic breathing we are doing expiratory breath okay. so this is how the breath is different in both cases but okay. in pranayama if you look at we are just doing expiratory phase ha ha yes that is not the breath which covid patients need covid patient needs a very well designed program which is for every particular age for a young child it's different for a elderly it's different and for a young youth it's different because covid is just not affecting the lung it's affecting your and heart time. and your blood vessels so it has to be designed in uh, protocol at at par with the long covid protocol so we have to keep your bp and your heart rate in check keep the heart balance and then work on the breath and the pulmonary fibrosis so vani i think i answered your question great great doctor uh, i just wanted to hear it from a, uh, a professional basically because people are like crazy about googling and all regarding this True. i just yeah. wanted to so hear I it from a to, from... yeah so tomorrow is 8th september we are celebrating it as a world physio day and the theme for this wow. year is long covid rehab and my word of advice to everybody with covid and recovered out of covid is your protocol of care is very different as per individual person so it is individualized care and please do not force yourself to get into exercising without the consultation of a physio because uh we have to take care and be mindful of not doing any exercise which bo- goes beyond your fatigue uh goes beyond your fatigue level so you have to be very mindful of your exercise capacity your fatigue levels and your breathing capacity they all have to work in conjunction decided by your physio who's been working on long covid for quite some time great thank you it's great to have you just before the world physio day yes, last year we had you like that Uh, celebrated all his your day with you and uh, it without uh, the knowledge and we had this session today so great to have you anjali again and you answered so many of our queries the best part is uh, like uh, optimal exercise just like how optimal diet is important optimal exercise is very very important never not to overdo anything and then uh, 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 try uh, and uh, plan your own exercise that's very important plan your own diet plan your own exercise that's yeah. very important to for the survival yeah. longevity being healthy healthy and hale and active and uh, not aging and all these things will come only when you exclusively plan, plan your diet plan your uh, exercise according to you and also uh, snack the exercises yeah snack the exercises that's, that's a, a good one Yeah. Thank you Lavanya for coming. Lavanya if you have a question you can unmute and ask. Is she there? Yeah, she's okay. there. Lavanya, she's there. Lavanya, Lavanya, Lavanya actually yeah. so thank you of Dr. Anjali and wonderful session. Yeah, really wonderful session Dr. Anjali. Much needed for all of us and wonderful takeaways from this session. Thank you very much. Thank you Lavanya. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Yeah. No questions, doctor. Everyone liked the session. Priyanka mm-hmm. Singh on Facebook also says, uh, "Sorry, Priyanka Singh, uh, nice and interesting session." And Sushila, some by name Sushila, uh, also speci- especially during COVID time, more and more uh, people have become dedicated for their health and are practicing yoga. Hmm. Mm-hmm. this is in uh, in continuation to the kunj bihari sir's message actually so yeah it was a great session anjali i mean uh, you are always that enthusiasm and you know the energies are always like high this high whenever you are here on t talks you know we experience that energy levels and keeps us motivated to do lots and lots of notes. yeah lots and Very lots of physical notes. activity and uh, and will be so motivated to do yes and will be happy that we need not count 1000 steps on <laughs> <laughs> dr janaki will be very happy <laughs> but I, i don't mind getting up every 10 minutes so i'm forced to otherwise otherwise also <laughs> ask somebody to ring your bell every you know 10 20 minutes. minutes go and yeah. open the door yeah i know <laughs>
door and open the door close the door again open the door close the door. very true <laughs> lot of the clients also you know no oh, i track my accounts i do 10000 per day compulsory i, I make sure that 10000 are done but they don't see that whether they are doing the fiscal activity in the right way or not and whether they are moving it right intervals or not no i think this is a great take away for you know all the participants and listeners uh, just move your body for every one hour half an hour to one hour and snack the exercise as said by dr anjali <laughs> and don't talk on phone while exercising yeah there is very true a lot everybody is focused yeah and don't be on the mobile and exercise yeah people are running on the treadmill and they'll have a phone on that's not the way this yes yeah so uh, wonderful uh, the time will not be enough for us we can go on for uh, even another that's... couple of hours <laughs> so thanks a lot you can uh, say a word of thanks to yes. dr anjali mayer yes yes thank you dr anjali for being here on tea talks and you are always you always bring that positive vibes and you know the energy on our tea talk session and it was uh, it was a great session and nice takeaways have been given by you i hope uh, audience would have enjoyed and you know have taken uh, good takeaways from this session today and hopefully they follow all your tips and thank you for being here on tea talks thank you anjali thank you mayuri thank you tea talks thank you dr janki such a pleasure to be with you same yeah. here same here thank bye. you all see you next tuesday same, same place bye for today bye bye